Hi guys, welcome back to the Drive Life channel and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the mass airflow sensor and intake air temperature sensor on my 2009 Volvo S80 D5. Now I made a video previously about this, uh, sort of telling you guys I was going to be investigating it because we've been having a little bit of a hiccup um, as we've been driving along. Uh, under sort of medium to low loads, just sort of with cruise control set to 50, 60, going up a hill. Um, there's been sort of a bit of a, a judder uh, that sort of happens every now and then. I did originally think it was the transmission playing up, but um, I, I scanned the car and I got a fault for the intake air temperature. Now, um, I did a little bit of research and I found that the mass airflow sensor and the intake air temperature sensor are actually built into one block together. Um, so by doing one we're also going to be doing the other if that makes sense so uh yeah i've got my trusty makita bit kit and we're going to get to work in the engine bay removing it and checking it out okay then so here we are underneath the engine or under the, the bonnet um at the engine i've removed the engine cover here as well that's why it hasn't got the the volvo cover on it um and this piece here is our sort of sensor housing now first thing you want to want to do really is remove the power going to it um it's got a little clip here and now what i do is i just get a little flathead screwdriver just lift it prise the little clip up and that releases nice and easily just like that now we've got to remove this clip here um, which is probably easiest done with the correct size flathead We're going to loosen this clip off here, like so. So now that will release its clip like that. And then we'll remove this piece. Uh, and there's two Torx bolts, one here and one here. And then one of those ones that's sort of stuck in the, the bit you're going to take off so you don't have to worry about dropping them down in the engine bay just like the ones on the airbox here so we're going to have a look see what size torx bit it is uh, that's the t27 i've just tried so it's one smaller than that um t25 perfect so we're going to start off by loosening this one It's a nice easy thing to get to this, uh, which is always good. You don't want it to be somewhere down deep in the engine block that is an absolute pig to get to. That neighbour going past in their Range Rover SCR. Sounds very nice. Sounds awesome when it starts up, it sort of goes loud and then it gets embarrassed and turns it down because if it look turns around and looks. <laughs> Okay, so actually this, this one is going to come completely out, so just bear that in mind, don't drop it. Um, we'll do the bottom one now as well. This one's a bit more difficult to get to, um, but it's manageable with this little thing. Could run it without the extension actually and make life easier. Um, the rest by hand I think just so I don't drop it make sure I don't lose the washers as well because um, that can make life a bit of a misery so what we need to do is sort of pull manipulate it so that we can move the air box enough uh, to remove this These things always go far easier in your head, don't they, than uh, planned. But um, it looks like this has been taken off before, because if you can see, this clip here should sit in this little bit here. Um, so it's been removed before. Um, and it's got a Bosch unit in it, genuine Volvo. Uh, it's 2009, so it's um, you can just see the date on it there. Um, so it is the original part. Uh, so not surprised if it starts to go a bit funny. But um, yeah, like I said, this looks like it's been removed before. So just going to um, just sat in a bushing here. I'm not sure how that's actually in. Um, but let's see what we can do with the air box. 
It might be easier to remove that first. There we go. Just this rubber duct, pull that off as well. And the whole lot should just pull out. It's just sat in with a clip. There we go. So I'm going to use the flexible bit of this. Um, which will help. Well, actually, I haven't um, undone this screw enough here. So you can see it's got a mesh on it, um, and that's to stop it getting too dirty. There we go, that should come out now. sure why it's been so difficult to uh, remove but in there you can see the mass airflow sensor and the intake air temperature sensor what I'm going to do I'm going to loosen this clip off even more I don't think that is the issue but um, at least it's one more thing that we can say we've done and it isn't the issue if that makes sense Okay, so that's completely loose now. Um, it's got no sort of grip on the uh, part we're trying to remove here. How are we getting there? Might just be a brute force job, you know. And just like that. So, um, taking a look at the sensor here, you can't really see much um, in terms of whether it looks okay or not. So, this is obviously the air flows through here, um, hits the sensor, comes out on the other side. Now, the fact that this is all clean and everything is good. Um, I don't have many doubts that the sensor is not clean as well um, so I'm just going to take this and look um, and then we'll go from okay so what I've done is I've just sprayed it out with some uh, compressed air because I can see there's some dust on the inside here um, so I'm guessing that's probably what's um, caused this to play up so I'm going to refit it now and um, then we'll hopefully run the car for a bit and um, not have any more issues now one thing to bear in mind is you've got the airflow um, here, so you have to fit it the right way around. So we're going to be fitting it back this way, um, the way that it came out. Now this first bit is just a case of brute force, really. Um, getting it to go back in. I'm going to get that bottom bit in first, and then we can. There we go. Come on. There we go just like that and then this one just back in here like so and that all marries up now what I did to just move the air box is I move this little bit uh, from a holder in there so I'm just gonna line that back up and do that and then I've also disconnected this pipe here which just is very easy and slots back on just like that but um yeah I want to get this bit seated nicely uh, so it doesn't rub Okay, so I've managed to re sort of situate the um, airbox here. So we're going to go and do everything back up. 
Um, this rotates quite freely in here, which makes it very easy to line up your screws where they should be going. So I'm just going to do them in hand tight just to locate it, and I'll do the other one as well. So the worst thing is when you completely tighten something up and then the other hole doesn't line up. Um, it could be a bit of a nightmare. So those two are in, so I'm going to do those up now as the Range Rover back again. Just like so, just going to flip it onto Titan as well. So you can actually get this bit kit, um, I'll use it quite a bit on the channel. If you just type in um, Drive Life Amazon, it'll take you to my Amazon page and um, you can find it on there. I've got a load of the, all the other bits and pieces as well, the oils, fluids that I use for the car. I've listed them all on there just to make it nice and easy for you guys to find them. I thought it'd be a nice useful thing so that viewers, subscribers, followers on Instagram um, can yeah, find all the stuff they need because it can be a nightmare trying to find the right bits and pieces and I've been through and made sure they're all the right bits and pieces. So let's just tighten this bad boy up. We'll situate the clip back where it's meant to be in here. Um, and hopefully it won't make a difference probably, but um make me feel a bit better anyway. I'm doing this just before I go off for a barbecue with my parents. <laughs> Going back to see them. So uh, hopefully it'll all be fitting because Mrs. DL has left her jeep at um, a friend because she was on a night out last night so we've only got one car at the moment so i get told off for broken the car now <laughs> make sure it's all back in one piece so this is tightened up nicely Don't go too tight because I'm not breaking these plastics because uh, this is 12 year old plastic. Um, just clear that out, and you don't want it breaking because um, it's quite brittle. There we go, um, and that is the job done. So, um, yeah, I'll run the car now and um, let you guys know what it says. Okay, then, so I've run the engine for about 20 minutes now. Um, run the codes and we're not receiving the code anymore for the intake air temperature sensor so what i'm thinking is probably just had some crap on it um i've blown out with the air the compressed air now the reason i knew it was this is because it was given funny readings so either the sensor was broken or it was dirty um unfortunately it was the latter so i haven't had to replace it i haven't actually looked at how much these sensors are but um it's nice to know that if it does fail it's quite easy to remove and replace so um yeah i just take this time to look as well at the rest of the engine see how it looks i've noticed we've got um a bit of crap build up here which um i'm attributing to the egr because that's all on the front here isn't it so um might have to give that um a go sorting that out um but overall it's all doing fairly well we're getting a bit of oil sweat over on the um turbo feed over here you can see it look it's all a bit filthy down here and this is it's the turbo re return um oil return just weeps out a little bit of oil every now and then they'll, all the uh, rubbish sticks to it uh, which makes it look a lot worse than it actually is but um still keeping an eye on it checking the oil regularly um and the oil isn't dropping particularly so um I'm not concerned it's not leaving any patches on the ground i think it's just coating the plastic and then catching all the dust but um yeah overall as you can see all the all the injectors are all okay they haven't got any sort of black death or anything on them um, which is where they get sort of a big carbon build up on the outside lets you know that the seal's gone and you probably need to replace the injector that's all good um no leaks on long fuel rail or anything so I think we are all good to go. The car's got its MOT in a couple of weeks um, and I'm hoping for a first time pass with no 
advisories um, because I fixed the last advisory and there hasn't really been any other issues since. We we'll look at our belt as well. This is our cam belt here, um, and as you can see, that's all fairly okay. It's not damaged in any way on this piece anyway that I can see. Um, and looking down, there's no thin bits. There's no wear on sort of the sides. Um, it's still got a good amount of life in it. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, but um, I mean it's hit 100k now this car it's last done um well it was written there at around 70k so in theory we should get another 10 15k out of this uh, maybe even 20 but um, i'll probably get it done before then anyway because uh, i don't want it to um become an issue um they all say about and everything as well it looks absolutely fine that's all genuine volvo which is nice um so uh, yeah, it's all going well underneath the engine, or underneath the bonnet anyway. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you've had this issue. Um, let me know if you've had one of these fail, these sensors. That'd be interested to know. And um, yeah, let, give us an update on your Volvos. We could hear how yours are all going. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. <laughs>